How many photos do you have stored on your hard drive? A thousand? Ten thousand? A hundred thousand? Maybe a million? Or are you like me with 13 terabytes of digital files stored on hard drives? Do you have backups? That's correct. Plural. More than one. If you don't have a backup and a backup of the backup, you're simply begging for disaster to happen. Stay tuned and I'll share my method for keeping my images safe. Hey gang, you may have noticed the cover photo for this video labels it as a marketing video. If you're going to start taking on clients as a photographer and charging money, you better have a foolproof, bulletproof, nature-proof system to archive your images in the event that a client needs copies of them in a few years. And please don't kid yourself into thinking that if you don't take pictures professionally, that you don't need a backup system. Do you really want to risk losing all of your photographs that you have of your children, your vacations, your family events? Of course not. So before I go any further, full disclosure, I am not an IT professional. I just play one when my wife hands me her laptop and says it won't do something. I'm a photographer. The information that I'm sharing with you in this video is based on my experience with digital files collected over the last 20 years. Now if you are an IT person, before you leave a comment describing in tech terms how your way is much better than mine, remember, I'm speaking to photographers, not computer engineers. So if you can't describe how your system is better in the computer speak for dummies language, please spare us the bragging, okay? Now for the rest of you, there is going to be some tech speech in this video, so I'll do my best to keep it simple. For many years, IT pros have recommended what is called a 3-2-1 strategy for backups. Three backups of your files on two different hard drives with one copy off-site. This way, in your office, you would have two backups so that in the event of your original file or hard drive becoming unusable, there would be two additional copies of the file readily available. And in the extreme event of a fire and all three of the versions that are located in your office are destroyed, you will still have one copy off-site in another location. Now I won't argue that that's a sound plan. However, for the needs and budgets of most photographers, a one and one strategy will work very well as long as you automate the process. That means one backup on-site and one backup off-site. Now if I'm shooting tethered, my files are saved to my laptop's hard drive and using Capture One Pro, a copy is immediately saved to an external one terabyte drive. This backup feature is also available in Adobe's Lightroom. After the shoot, I transfer the images from the one terabyte external drive to my 27 inch 4K iMac with 32 gigs of RAM and a three terabyte built-in hard drive. The only images that are stored on my iMac's hard drive are files that are current, meaning recent shoots that I'm still working on. If I shoot direct to SD or CF cards, the images are immediately downloaded onto my iMac hard drive right after my shoot. I have a program installed on my iMac called Carbon Copy Cloner. This piece of software that costs less than $40 will monitor my hard drive for new files and automatically copy them to a backup hard drive. Carbon Copy Cloner is a Mac-only piece of software. You can also use a program like GoodSync, which is available for both Mac and PC at a cost of just under $30. Carbon Copy Cloner checks my iMac hard drive every hour and automatically copies new files to my primary backup hard drives. Okay, so I've done a shoot and downloaded the files to my iMac. Carbon Copy Cloner has found the new files and created the first backup automatically. Now I can delete the files that were left on my laptop's hard drive or reformat the memory cards that I used for the shoot. Currently, my primary backup drives are two 8 terabyte G Technology G-RAID Thunderbolt drives. These are RAID 0 drives. Now that's tech speak for only holding one copy of each file. RAID drives can be configured to hold two copies of each file for redundancy. For my needs, Having two copies of the same file in the same hard drive unit doesn't provide me with any real benefit. If you want to learn more about RAID drives, just Google it. These two RAID drives are really my primary storage. Remember, my iMac is only a three terabyte hard drive, so the only backup on the RAID drives are the images that are actively being worked on from the iMac. All of the rest of the 13 terabytes of files that I have 
are primary storage for my entire image catalog. Now also in my office are two Drobo drives attached to a second iMac. The Drobo drives had been my units of choice for many years until the Thunderbolt technology became readily available and pre-configured RAID drives became affordable. Then I switched to the G drives and the Drobos became my secondary backup in-house. The Carbon Copy Cloner software also monitors my G-RAID drives and once a day copies any new files over to the Drobo drives. This process maintains the backup of my entire image catalog. Now if you're new to backup technology, the Drobos were a great solution because they were totally plug and play at a time when RAID drives required a little computer experience. The problem with Drobos is that they create a proprietary file format so that if your Drobo unit fails, you can't just remove the drive and put it in a RAID unit or simply attach it to a computer. You have to put it in another Drobo drive to retrieve your files. Now I have my computer's hard drive backed up on my primary storage drives. I have my entire image catalog backed up in-house on my Drobo drives. But I need to create my off-site backup. In the early days of digital technology, photographers would burn CDs and DVDs and take them to the bank and store them in safe deposit boxes in order to have an off-site backup. Goes without saying, that plan was awful on so many levels, but there were a few other good options. Fortunately, internet access is much faster and hard drives are much cheaper and there are now companies offering cloud backups at extremely affordable rates. The company that I use is called Backblaze. Backblaze provides you with unlimited cloud storage for just $5 per month. That's right, for $5 per month, you can back up every single digital file you have with no limits. Heck, a lot of you spend that much every day at Starbucks. The way it works is incredibly simple. You download a small program that runs in the background on your Mac or PC. This program monitors your computer's hard drives or any hard drives attached to your computer. And anytime it finds a new file, it will copy it to the cloud. Full disclosure, Backblaze is not sponsoring this video and has not paid or provided free services for me to talk about them. I'm a paying customer. If you sign up for their service using the link in the description below, I will get a free month, but that's it. I'm recommending them because I use the service. I've needed to have images restored and it works. I've tried their competitors and found Backblaze to be more efficient and less expensive. Now to be clear, that's $5 per month for one computer, but as many hard drives as you want to attach to it, you'll get unlimited cloud backup storage. You can pay by the year or even two years and save even more money. Now this is not like Dropbox or Google Drive where you're using the cloud storage to synchronize your files on multiple computers. This is strictly a backup. I'm still a user of Dropbox and Google Drive for quick transfer of files and to store files that I need available on all my devices. When you delete a file from your computer, you can still retrieve a copy of it from Backblaze for up to 30 days before it's removed from the cloud. Now I should warn you, if you have a lot of files and you're setting this up for the first time, it will take a while to get all of your files uploaded. When I first started with Backblaze, I had just over eight terabytes of data and it took almost a month to get it all uploaded. Now that's going to be the same, if not longer, with any company that you use. To retrieve a lost file, you simply log into Backblaze via a web browser and it will show you all of your files. You then select the ones that you need restored and it will create a download for you. You can also do this via their app which is available for iOS and Android. Now if you have a hard drive fail and need to download a large amount of files, they make this very easy as well. You can have them copy your files to a thumb drive or external USB drive and then ship it to you. So let's say you have a three terabyte drive fail and you don't want to take the time involved to download three terabytes worth of files. Backblaze will charge you the cost of the hard drive and then copy your files and ship it to you. Once you receive it, you have two options. You can just keep the hard drive they give you and they'll keep your money. Or you can copy the files off the hard drive onto another drive that you already own and then ship it back. When they receive the drive, they'll credit you back for the cost of the drive. All you pay is the shipping. I've been using Backblaze for about four years now and it couldn't be simpler. The program runs in the background and requires no interaction from me. I tried two other companies that offer this service before deciding on Backblaze, CrashPlan and Carbonite. 
CrashPlan is affordable, but their software caps automatic uploading at four gigabytes. Anything over that has to be uploaded manually. I also ran into a problem getting answers from their customer service team when I first tried the service. Carbonite was just simply expensive. They advertise a lot on TV, and you know that somebody has to pay for those ads. I did include links to both companies in the descriptions below. There are a few other companies, but they offer less storage capacity, yet charge the same prices. So now you know. You need to back up your files. It's not as hard or as expensive as you thought. So don't get caught without a backup for your backup. In the big picture of money spent on photography gear and software, backing up your precious photographs is a small expense, yet potentially the most important thing that you will spend money on. That's all for now. I appreciate you watching my videos, but remember that you can't become a better photographer unless you pick up that camera and practice because your best shot. It's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.